$5,000 in computer parts and no experience at all with building computers. What can go wrong? In this video I will show you how I build my computer, how you can do it too and why do I even need such a powerful computer. So now I'm just going to play computer games on my new PC, right? No, not at all. This computer will let me build even better projects, mostly robots with artificial intelligence and I want to install on it one very specific piece of software called Isaac Sim from Nvidia. This software lets you simulate robots, it should be quite easy to use and is very capable. I cannot wait to start using it and show you that in one of my future videos, so subscribe to don't miss it. I'm also thinking about redoing the video on ChatGPT robot where I would compare different models like for example Gemini models from OpenAI or Grok and test which one performs the best on a simple robot. Do you want to see that? Let me know in the comments. It's also worth mentioning that this video is not sponsored by any of these brands. I paid for every single part that you see except the GPU. The GPU was provided by Nvidia for one of the future projects that I'm still working on because in order to finish that, well, I need to assemble this computer. So I didn't pay for the GPU, but Nvidia is not sponsoring this video. They are sponsoring the future video and all the other parts I bought with my own money. Now let's look at the parts. Links to all of them are in the description. The RAM is DDR5 96GB 6000MHz. Two NVMe drives, six terabytes of storage in total. For the CPU, we have Ryzen 9 9950X. We also have the ASRock motherboard, 1000 watt power supply, liquid cooling for the CPU, and of course, the graphics card NVIDIA GeForce RTX 1490. That's like 60% of the budget for this PC. Some fans and of course the case. The case I bought for my PC from Asus, I just mostly chose it because of the design. I really like the way it looks. It's very minimalistic and it's also very breathable. There is a lot of holes inside, like a mesh on the sides. And you can also buy the version with the window here, which in the end I decided I just prefer a computer that does not look like it's super powerful from the outside, but it is on the inside. If you do not have any experience with building PCs, just go on YouTube and watch some videos. It's a great resource, you will find plenty of information and I'm sure you will be able to build your PC as well. The videos really taught me a lot, but let's start with something simple that I just simply cannot break, like the fans. And here I can tell you that fan placement is very important. Here at the bottom I will have three fans so that the cold air from the outside goes into the case like this and then here we have the GPU so that this GPU is cooled down with this fresh air. Here in the back there will be also another fan that will bring the cold air inside and three fans at the top for liquid cooling of the CPU will throw all of that cold air outside of the case while cooling the CPU. And if you think that this shot looks a bit weird you are right, I recorded that on my bed because this is the only green surface that I have. It totally worked! If you bought all of the fans in the right size, it will be quite easy. All the screws are included in the kit, so we just install it one by one and here is how I did it. The one fan in the back will be replaced, it will also blow air inside the case, not outside. Now I will open the power supply, but not because I want to install it. I found a tip online in one of the videos that you can just simply plug the power supply to power and then it is grounded. So you can just safely touch it, of course it's painted so it's not gonna work that well, but it's definitely better than nothing uh, to just ground yourself to keep all the parts secure. And considering these are so expensive, I think I'll just do it to be safe. The case is already prepared for assembly, so now we can focus on the motherboard. Just simply put your motherboard on the cardboard, it's perfect size and you won't scratch your desk that way. The first thing I will install are the drives, just undo the heatsink, then put the drive carefully in place and put the heatsink back on top. Of course, remove the protective foil from the heatsink and do not remove the sticker from the drive because it is already thermally conductive. Then I installed the other drive which already had heatsink installed. And now it's time for the second most expensive component of this PC and that is the Ryzen 9 CPU. This part is a bit scary because the CPU is so expensive, but it is actually quite easy. Just open the socket like this, put the CPU from the top without any side forces at all, just gently put it in place, then close the socket like this with this plastic thing on top, and then close the latch. You have to use quite a lot of force to close it, but no worries, it's all fine, the plastic thing should pop off, and then you are ready, your CPU is installed. And right after the CPU I installed the memory, but the order is not really that important, so you can do it however you want. 
I will be occupying only two slots of the RAM, so it's very important to check which slots are labeled with first and in my case that's slot number two and four looking from the top. So I will install my RAM sticks exactly here in the slot number two and slot number four. Once again, considering how expensive it all is and how fragile it seems to be, it's quite scary how much force you have to put in to install the RAM correctly. I did a mistake, nothing very crucial, nothing that can be fixed. I put the fan right here and then I wanted my power supply to be up there, but that collides with the cables and also with the liquid cooling that, that I'm using. So now I will just remove the fan maybe even install the power supply already to check the alignment and then I will move forward with liquid cooling. Throughout the video you've seen me assembling a PC and you might have noticed something that made the whole process a lot easier. The electric standing desk from the Stronic, the sponsor of this video. Being able to quickly adjust the height while working on the build was a total game changer. I could lower it to screw in components and then rise it up to comfortably work inside the case. The Desktronic desk has three memory presets so switching between standing and sitting takes literally one tap. Plus, it moves super smoothly and quietly. It's also crazy stable. This thing can hold up to 160 kilograms and there are built-in USB and USB-C ports, so that means you can easily charge your phone, cameras and other equipment right from the desk. But wait, there is more! SitPro is a chair from Destronic that has 10 ergonomic adjustment settings. It means you can pretty much adjust everything and it does that. And that's super cool. But for me, the best part is that you can get pro wheels for your chair, which are the best wheels for an office chair I've seen in my life. They run so smoothly and do not scratch the floor. And if that's not enough, how about a simple fact that it's one of the most comfortable chairs I've ever tried. So whether you are working on your PCB build, a DIY project, or just want to finally have a setup that's comfortable and built to last, check out Deskronic. There is a link to them in the video description and also don't forget to use my discount code when placing an order. Thanks a lot to Deskronic for supporting my work and thank you for watching this sponsored segment. I installed the power supply in place and then realized that I'm not really able to properly connect the cables so learn from my mistakes and firstly install all the cables and then install the power supply in your case. It is very important to make sure that all these connectors are plugged all the way in. So just use a lot of force, make sure that everything is connected properly so that there is no excessive heat building up on the connectors because that can melt them. And because the tubes from the liquid cooling were colliding with the power supply and all the cables, I had to remove it, install the power supply and then install the liquid cooling again. When building my PC for this video, and as I mentioned, it's my first one, I did quite a lot of mistakes and had to install and then remove and then install again some components. And that's totally fine as long as you learn from my mistakes. So also to help you with your PC building journey, I showed all of my mistakes in this video so that you can learn from them and do not repeat my mistakes when building your very own first PC. Depending on what CPU, motherboard and the liquid cooling you are using, you need to replace the holder that is installed on the motherboard. The instruction for that wasn't super clear, but after looking multiple times on the pump, the bracket and everything else, I realized how to do it properly. And that is the very last step before installing the motherboard in the case. Installing the motherboard is very easy, but you need to keep in mind two things. Firstly, make sure that the standoffs in the case are installed in the same pattern as on your motherboard. If you need to modify anything, do it before placing the motherboard inside the case. And second thing, once the motherboard is inside the case, do not move it sideways in any way. Just place it gently from the top without any side force, because otherwise you can scratch the motherboard with the standoffs and damage the traces on the bottom of the motherboard. That is a pretty easy way to destroy it, we don't want to do that. Now it's time for the cables and these fit only in one way in certain connector, so it's not really that hard and you cannot really do it wrong. I also have to connect the front panel with all the USB ports, the button to turn on the computer and all the audio inputs. When connecting all of the cables and doing the cable management, it is very important to properly connect all the connectors all the way. Remember, check it multiple times. Make sure that no cables are touching the fans or any element that can be hot. And lastly, make it tidy and pretty. Why you ask? So that you are satisfied with it at the end. 
It might not be the cleanest build on YouTube, but it's my first one, so I'm quite satisfied with the cable management. And then we can do the thermal paste on the CPU. I know there will be a lot of comments, you do not need to spread it, and that I do it wrong. That's the way I do it, I want to just make sure that everything is covered properly, then you just need to remove the sticker from the pump. I carefully placed the pump on the CPU and pressed on it so that the thermal paste is evenly distributed and then you can one by one slowly and carefully tighten all the screws in a cross-like pattern. So far the GPU was not installed because it's easier to wire the cables and connect everything when this big GPU is not taking up a lot of space inside the case. In general, it's a good approach to install the smallest components first and then the bigger ones, but now it's finally time to install the GPU. So here it is. The monster. The beast. The 4090. Okay, let's get back to work. To install the graphics card, you need to remove the brackets from the back of the case like I did, and now we can appreciate the fancy packaging for the very last time. I had to remove one additional bracket from the back and then when GPU clicked this very important moment, I just covered that with my head on the camera, sorry for that. After fixing your GPU with a screw, connect the cable and once again make sure that it is properly connected. There is quite a lot of power going through this cable and small connector, so it has to be connected properly. Install the filters, side panels, front panels and your computer should be ready to turn it on for the first time. And then I turned it on for the first time. There was no smoke, which was a good sign. I obviously had to configure the BIOS, install the windows, but it was all boring, so let's skip to the future. And the future is basically now. I have been using this computer for about a month. And honestly, in a way, I was expecting more. I mean, my old computer is already 10 years old, but it was still handling editing 4K footage, designing Infusion, everything that I do for this channel and for like, you know, general everyday use case, it was doing that pretty well. And of course, this one is a lot more powerful. I can export my videos 10 times faster, but at the same time, it's been 10 years and this computer is a lot more expensive than the one I bought 10 years ago. And doing it all, spending all that money just to export the video 10 times faster is definitely not worth it for me. But of course, there are things that my old computer just couldn't run, like modern LLMs. In my old computer, the GPU is so old that I cannot even run the smallest llama model, but now on 4090 I can run a lot of models and I can do it very, very fast. And of course, the main purpose of this computer, which is Isaac Sim, I couldn't even install it on my old computer because it's so old and so slow. But now I can easily run it, load all the examples and use it for one of my future projects. Hopefully, if that works well, this will be my main thing to simulate my robots and build even better projects, which I'm super excited for. And after playing with Isaac Sim for a while, I have to say it's an amazing piece of software. It might be my favorite one so far. Here you can see some robotic simulations that are already loaded in the Isaac Sim and of course you can also simulate all the physics. Oh yeah, and because I'm using Windows 10 on the old computer and Windows 11 is not supported by the CPU that I'm using, there is no way to get updates anymore. I know there are some workarounds to get Windows 11 to run on older hardware, but in general that's not something that you can just simply install just like that. I truly cannot wait to start using this computer in my more advanced projects and finally learn all about the Isaac Sim and about robot operating systems. So if you would like to see that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to don't miss it. Thank you very much for watching and thanks a lot to Desktronic for sponsoring this video and providing a really cool desk for my new recording setup. Happy making and see you in the next video. Bye.